Faye Nicole. She had strawberry blonde hair, um, which was really cute. And she had huge hands, which was so funny because she was just this tiny little peanut. And, you know, I have pretty big hands, so I always thought that she got those from me. Welcome to Still a Part of Us, a place where moms and dads share the story of their child who was stillborn or who died in infancy. I'm Winter. And I'm Lee. We are grateful you joined us today. Please note that this is a story of loss and has triggers. Thanks to our lost parents who are willing to be vulnerable and share their children with us. If you're listening to this podcast, just know that on our YouTube channel, there are pictures and videos that are related to the stories that are being shared. Subscribe and share it with a friend that might need it and tell them to subscribe. Why? Because people need to know that even though our babies are no longer with us, they're still a part of us. Caitlin, thank you for coming on, and um, we're excited to hear more about Faye. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what your family looks like um, right now, and also maybe when the time that Faye was born. Um, yeah, so um, my husband Taylor and I, we actually met in college. Um, we both went to the University of Wisconsin in Madison, and we got married in June of 2016, so almost six years ago. And Faye was our first pregnancy. Um, and now we also have a son named Kellen, who's nine and a half months old. And we have a gold retriever. She's like four. Yeah, four. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And where do you guys cur- currently live in? In what area are you guys at right now? We live like around 30 miles north of Milwaukee in Wisconsin. Mm, okay. And we've been here for almost five years. We've owned our house here. Wonderful. And is family nearby in Wisconsin then? Yeah, yeah. We're both from Wisconsin. Um, My parents are probably like 40-ish minutes away from where we live. Oh, that's nice. And his parents are, you know, a little over an hour, so it's not too far. Yeah, that's that's nice having family close-ish, right? (laughs) Right. (laughs) So you can hang out with them when you need to. Um, Wonderful. And at the time of this recording... Can you tell me when Faye was, um, about how long ago Faye was born? She was born on November 7th, 2019. Not been, yeah, that's, it just is, it's amazing how time flies by, isn't it? Uh, So, but thank you so much. It is like sometimes just so incredible to think about how that was over two years ago. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing about that. And so, Faye, was your first pregnancy, was that um, was that part of the plan of um, how did your pregnancy go? Did you guys have any fertility issues? Were you planning on, on getting pregnant? Um, yeah, so, no, we didn't have any fertility issues. Um, we were planning on getting pregnant, so she was, she was very much planned. Um, we got pregnant with her pretty quickly, I would say probably like, you know, maybe the second or third month of like trying and the pregnancy went well. I mean, I had morning sickness. I I was pretty sick, um, until about like into the second trimester, like 18 ish weeks, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, we had actually taken a trip to Belgium at that time. Oh, (laughs) fun. (laughs) And yeah. And I think like, the first day we were there when we had first arrived was like the last time that I really felt sick. Um, so thankfully I was able to enjoy the trip. Um, but yeah, after like right then is when kind of like my energy levels really like went up. So, Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Very, um, you know, otherwise very healthy, normal pregnancy. I was very active. Like I had been going to a gym for a while and I kept up with that. Um, on a regular basis, obviously backing off, but, um, you know, and taking, like I take my dog for walks regularly. So yeah, you were healthy and active and yep, all of the things that you needed to do. So when you went to doctor's appointments, um, so actually you were, you were pregnant pre pandemic. This is, I know that sounds kind of funny, but it (laughs) has completely changed how, um, how visits happen and everything. So, um, Mm -hmm. As you've gone to visits um, with your doctor, or were you seeing uh, were you seeing a regular OBGYN? Were you seeing a midwife? Were you seeing a, a PA or anything like that? How was your um, care 
How, how did that look for you? I was seeing just a regular OBGYN Mm -hmm. and I, I had actually like, they had this app that we could sign up for through their doctor's office uh, where we would monitor our like heart, um, not heart rate, our blood pressure and our weight every week. Oh, and, like they sent us a kit and we would do that and enter it into this app and the doctor could see it kind of remotely. Yeah. So I, you know, in the earlier days, I only had to go like every six weeks instead of every four. Right. Okay. Um, which I was like all for that. Right. Because I was like, oh, just, you know, let them do their thing. Like, I don't need to be going to the doctor all the time that, you know, in the early stages. So I did that. I had like great blood pressures and like weight gain was right where it needed to be every time. So I was very like, you know, tracking things, I guess, health wise. So good. Good. Well, that's, that's kind of nice that your your doctor's office had kind of that option. Um, Yeah. That's because unfortunately, or fortunately, like everybody's a lot of, there's a lot of telemedicine happening right now. So that's, that's great. Um, Tell me, did you have a kind of an early scan or anything like that, an early ultrasound or anything? Or was, did you have just the ultrasound at say the, the anatomy scan at around, you know, 18 to what 22 weeks or whatever that is? I had a total of two ultrasounds mm-hmm. with her. I had an early one at, I think it was around nine weeks. Like they do it somewhere between eight and 10 weeks, mm-hmm. like the dating scan, um, which everything looked good there. It was, you know, I had told them like, you know, when my last cycle was and that my due date would be this date. And it was right on good. the date that I had told them. Um, and then I did have, you know, a 20 week um, anatomy scan as well, uh, which everything looked, you know, perfectly great then too. And that's when we found out that she was a girl. Um, was that something you guys wanted to do? And yeah, yeah, we wanted to, I'm like such a planner and I like (laughs) really am not well do, I don't do well with surprises. So I was like, there's no way I could keep this a surprise. Yeah. But we kind of suspected that we were having a girl like my husband was just like right from day one. He was like, yep, we're having a girl. <laughs> oh, really? He, yeah. He was like right there. Okay. Yep. Um, and I'm assuming was Taylor there with you at um, the 20 week scan? Yes. Yeah, he was. Awesome. That was probably really fun to be there together to be yeah. able to see that. So, um, okay. So she looked good and was progressing. Was she at the right size and all that jazz? Yeah, I don't remember exactly like them giving me percentiles, but she was, I think, pretty much average size okay. at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. And then, um, so let's kind of talk about as the pregnancy progresses, like um, how are you feeling like when you get into the third trimester? You know, actually, it's really interesting because at my 20-week scan, for whatever reason, I was like so incredibly nervous. Oh, I don't know why I was just like, so, so nervous. And I had, I actually had high blood pressure because I was so nervous for the scan. I think I just wanted to know that everything was okay. Um, because you don't get ultrasounds with the the Doppler at your visits. So, you know, that was kind of weird. I don't know. Maybe I always would have been nervous for that anyway, but that was just kind of interesting. And I remember kind of like after that think like looking up, like, you know, what the odds are of something like bad happening after a normal scan. So that was kind of weird. But, you know, once I got over that, it was just like, fine. Like I had great energy. I was starting to, you know, like prepare, have baby showers, you know, everything. I was just getting like so excited by the time third trimester rolls around, you know, you kind of just think like, oh, this baby's coming home, you know? Yeah. Yeah, by that time you're like, oh yeah, we're in the home stretch. It's totally fine. Yeah, exactly. Home stretch. <laughs> yeah. And so tell me how things progressed then um as you got closer to finding out. Yeah. So um I uh I basically had um my routine 36 week checkup scheduled, which, um, it was supposed to be on a Tuesday. And I remember having a work conflict and, and I ended up rescheduling it for a Wednesday. Okay. So I went in on, um, Wednesday, November 6th. 
and I was 36 weeks in one day. And I remember um, when they called me back to the exam room, um, and, you know, I was kind of getting checked in and situated. Um, you know, they asked me like how I was doing and, you know, I kind of made a joke like, oh, I'm really busy and stressed with work today. I'm probably going to have high blood pressure <laughs> because I, that's one thing I noticed when I get nervous, like my blood pressure goes up. So yeah, yeah. I just kind of make it made a joke about it. And she, you know, she was like, oh yeah, the doctor will check. And, um, and you know, she, they ask you every time that late, like, you know, are you feeling the baby moving? And, and I said, yeah, I've been, you know, she's really active at night and in the mornings. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I said, although like, I kind of just got up today and kind of just like went about my day, kind of like rushed getting ready to go. Cause I had so much to do. Yeah. So I don't know if I really noticed. And I was on the phone a lot and she was like, you know, oh yeah, that happens. We get busy. Like, you know, I'm sure everything is great. So I did end up having high, high blood pressure. It wasn't crazy high, but it was like a more elevated than usual. And so when my doctor came in, she, she's kind of a joke, like a joker. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so she made a joke. She's like, if you don't shape up that blood pressure, I'm going to end up having to induce you early. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so it was kind of funny because we were just, I mean, she, I, I actually work for the healthcare system that um, my doctor works oh, for. Really? So she kind of knew yeah. why I was stressed out. Yeah. So yeah, it was funny. <laughs> um, so then she just did like the, you know, the group B strep swab mm -hmm. and asked if I wanted her to check my, to check my cervix. And I said, yeah, let's see what's going on. So she did that. And I was like half a centimeter dilated and oh, okay, like 70% of face. So she said my body was starting to yeah. prepare. Right. And, um, and you're at 36 weeks. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She was like, yeah, it's not, it's, it's a little something like your body's preparing, but it's not, you're not going to like go into labor right away, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. So, um, then, um, after that she, you know, got the Doppler mm -hmm. and she was kind of, you know, moving it around a lot cause she wasn't able to find a heartbeat and, you know, she was always able to find a heartbeat immediately, like even around like 12 weeks. Mm. Um, so I started to get really nervous and, um, you know, she, she kind of in one spot, she was like, I'm, I think I can hear, you know, it faintly, but you know, when she said that I was like, no, that's mine because I could feel, I could start, I started to feel my heart like pounding in my chest right. <clears throat> and then I knew it was like matching up with my heartbeat. So, but she wasn't worried. Like she's like, Oh, you know, your baby's just being difficult today. I'm going to go get our little ultrasound machine. Mm -hmm. And so she left. And when she left, I just had this like extreme sense of dread. I, um, I was laying there thinking to myself, like, Caitlin, did you feel her move today? And I, I couldn't, I couldn't come up with anything. <laughs> like, I was just like, oh my, you know, so I'm already at that point, like super worried. So she comes back in and it was the, it's like this small ultrasound machine. It's like the transvaginal one they do at the like dating scan. Yeah. Um, and so she, you know, she starts that and I'm, I'm, the screen is facing me too. And the first thing I saw on the screen was her heart. It was like a black hole in her chest and you know, where her heart should be beating. And, um, then, then like the line for the heart rate was just flat. And I just immediately sat up and I said out loud, like her heart's not beating. And my doctor, she was just totally silent. And um, I, I looked right at her and she was just staring at the screen and her eyes were like red and she looked like she was going to cry. And like, she was like, her eyes were just wide open. She was like frozen. And like, I don't remember what she said after that. Um, I think it was something about like, you know, I, she needed to get me in for a real ultrasound because this was not, you know, like she doesn't do ultrasounds. This is not like the machine they should be using. But at that point, I just, I lure 
in the eyes. And I said, you're worried, aren't you? And then she just said to me, yeah, I I don't want to lie to you. I'm worried. And then after that, it was just like pure chaos. Like (laughs) there were nurses coming in and out. Um, You know, they asked me to call Taylor right away, which is obviously not a good sign. Yeah. And I couldn't get a hold of him because I knew he was in a meeting, you know, and I was alone because I had told him like he didn't need to come to this routine appointment. Um, and, and I knew he had a meeting and stuff. So had he been going to some of your previous appointments, just regular doctor's appointments? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. He tried to go to most of them, okay. but, um, this was one of those situations too, where I, I had rescheduled it oh. and I had rescheduled it to a time when he couldn't go. Gotcha. So I was like, don't worry about it. It's fine. Um, so then I, I called my mom. Um, and she answered and I was like, just really trying to keep it together. And I just said, mom, I'm at the doctor's office and they can't find a heartbeat. Like I have to go in for an ultrasound. And she of course was just like, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm leaving now basically. And just hung up. And, um, then Taylor called me back or I I might've texted him too and said, you need to call me like now. And he did call me back shortly after I talked to my mom and, you know, I said the same thing, like they can't find a heartbeat. I have to go into an ultrasound. And of course he was just like, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Like they both reacted exactly the same. Yeah. So then, um, the nurse, she walked me down to uh, radiology for an ultrasound. Um, so they actually walked me down a back hallway for privacy. Um, because, you know, they don't want to be escorting a heavily pregnant, bawling woman down the hall and like have everybody staring at me. So thankful for that. Um, you know, and at that point, I, I think I, I knew Faye was gone. I just, it just hadn't really registered with me yet. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of like autopilot, like almost like out of body yeah. <laughs> experience you're in shock. Like, it's yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just like you just survival mode. So, so we get to the ultrasound room and, you know, I lay down and of course they, you know, the tech like had the screen not facing me, which is also not a good sign. Um, and the nurse was in there with me. She was standing right there with me. She was actually like clutching my phone, waiting for my mom or Taylor to call to tell that they had gotten there um and so it was just it was it felt like it took forever and it was horrible like I just all I could hear the whole time was like the click 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 of the ultrasound and then obviously like my own sniffling because I was just crying and when the ultrasound was finally over the tech left kind of looked at the nurse and left the room and didn't say anything to you, of course, or showed you the screen no, or anything. And she was like so young. Like, I don't even know. I, I don't, I mean, she seemed sweet. So I just, I'm just kind of thinking like for protocol, like they just, weren't, she just wasn't supposed to really say See, anything to okay. me. Um, and so the nurse, she just looks at me and she grabs my hands and she said, Caitlin, I'm I'm so sorry they didn't find a heartbeat. And I just like, I just broke down and she just hugged me. And I was just asking like, how could this happen? And she was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Like all she could say was that she was so sorry. And I don't know, I think... We were, we were like that for several minutes, probably. And then, um, eventually she took me back to the exam room. And I think, you know, it was pretty soon after that, that my mom arrived. Um, and when she, my mom later told me that this, this same nurse like went out to get her in the waiting room. And she was like, she could not keep it together. (laughs) That her eye was like twitching because she was just so in so much distress too. 
I love that nurse. I she she had just had a baby too, like six months before oh. Faye. So yeah, yeah. Um, and my mom comes in, and then I just I was just like, Mom, I lost the baby. And then I just kind of like collapsed and sobbed like this just I don't even you can't even comprehend like it's just like a, your whole body yeah. this primal reaction that you don't even know you have in you and she just she just hugged me and she just kept saying she was so sorry and um you know I think Taylor arrived pretty quickly after that too um and it was the same thing he came in and I just said, I lost, I lost our baby. And you know, we just sobbed together. And <clears throat> I know my dad came. I don't know when. I mean, this is all when, like, the order of things in time just doesn't head up. <laughs> yeah. But I know my, my dad came. I don't think I saw him until like after I was all done, but he must have been out in the waiting room or something, but he had been crying too. And he was the one that had to call my siblings and tell them. And so, um, you know, at some point my OB had to come in and talk to us about next steps. And um, I knew because I had well, I, first of all, I work in the medical field, so I'm, I'm a little bit more like knowledgeable, I guess, on that side of things, but I had also seen like a stillbirth in a show years ago. Yeah. And it, like, it really stuck with me because it was so upsetting. (laughs) Yeah. And so I knew what I was dealing with. I knew I was going to have to give birth and like be induced and everything. So it it wasn't a surprise to me, like when she kind of came in to talk about our options. Um, you know, one was that, we could go home for the night um, if we weren't ready to go to the hospital and that we could go in the morning and be induced then um, and that she would be there that next morning. Okay. Um, or, you know, we could just go right away that night. And I, I just said like in a not as nice way, like, why would I want to go home? Like, I just want to get, get this over with. Like, I didn't want to have a, like a dead baby inside of me like what am I supposed to do at home yeah 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 um so so yeah I just was like why why would I want to go home let's just over with and um I did kind of beg her for a c-section um because I didn't want to push her out yeah which I've had a C-section now and I know that that would be equally horrible, but I think I was just thinking like, can you put me to sleep or something? Yeah. Let's get um, this over with. Yeah. Because, That's exactly what yeah, I feel. Because I knew, you know, I knew that it was going to be, you know, silent, that she wasn't going to cry. And I just couldn't handle the idea of that. But she said, no, like, you know, not with the longer recovery. And I know she had asked me like if I would want an epidural. And I said, yeah, I don't want to feel anything. Um, so by the time we left the clinic, it was, um, dark out because I had been there for, I don't know, three or four hours. So it was closing. Yeah. Um, and I just remember it was snowing and, um, I'm in Wisconsin, so it's not unheard of to have snow that early in the year, mm-hmm. but like, it's not typical. So it's something that I remembered. It was, it was like that big fluffy snowflakes that just fall really slowly. And when I see it now, I, I think of they, mm-hmm. um, so we, we went home quickly, which it was only like 10 minutes from the clinic. Um, because I didn't have a hospital bag packed yet for her. That was one of the last, you know, few things that I hadn't done yet. Right. And, um, and so I, at that point I was just like, it doesn't matter what I pack. Like I just kind of shoved a few things at Taylor cause he was packing a bag for both of us. And I didn't grab anything for Faye because, you know, I knew we wouldn't be bringing her home. I just, I didn't think she would need anything. Um, and while Taylor was, you know, packing up our stuff, I just like collapsed on the kitchen floor again. 
and was just sobbing. Um, and I was just asking, like, what did I do wrong to cause this? And that, you know, it was all my fault because I was supposed to keep her safe and I couldn't. And my parents, they were just, you know, holding me and telling me it wasn't my fault and that I did everything right. And I know, I think at one point, my dad just like went outside and shoveled our driveway (laughs) because he just had to like do something. Yeah. And so, and I know Taylor, um, Taylor called my coworker, who's also a really close friend, just to like, you know, tell her that, you know, I was, I was out of work basically. And I know after the fact, she told me like, she had answered the phone really chipper, like, Hey, Caitlin. And she's like, and then when I heard Taylor's voice, I knew it wasn't good. Um, so we, we, um, eventually left for the hospital. Um, Taylor and I drove, um, and it snowed the entire way there. So it was like, it took forever. It was just a silent, horrible drive. And it normally we're like 40 minutes from the hospital. So it's already not like a very quick drive, but, um, and I think my stay, my parents stayed behind at our house because, um, they were, you know, kind of getting our dog settled in. So we arrived at the hospital, my doctor had called them and, you know, obviously notified them that we were coming. So we checked into labor and delivery and, you know, a nurse kind of met us out front and brought us to our room, which was or 16. And from there, it was just a lot of like poking and prodding. (laughs) Um, I know that, um, I got hooked up to like the contraction monitor and had a bunch of blood work, you know, collected and got hooked up to my Pitocin IV. And I know they checked my cervix, which hadn't really changed since my appointment earlier that day. Mm -hmm. Um, I just remember like, during all this, my legs were like shaking uncontrollably. It was, which it was strange. I've never had that before, but I'm pretty sure now it was just severe anxiety. (laughs) You know, while I was having all of that done, Taylor, I think stepped out to call his parents um, to tell them the news and that they could come in the morning. Oh, okay. Uh, But because they're, they were, you know, an hour over an hour away. But they decided to jump in the car and come right away because mm. it was like eight, it was 8 p.m. I think around eight o'clock. So we didn't expect them to come that night, but they did, um, you know, and the, there was an on-call OB that came in and talked to me, talked to us for a while. Um, she was so nice and sweet. Oh, good. Um, she had been suspicious of a placental abruption because I think the reasoning was because I was having a lot of contractions actually, Already. but I didn't really notice them. Oh, really? Like, I was having them often, but I didn't really notice them. And so I don't know, apparently that might be like a, a, a hmm. something with placental abruption that causes like you not to feel con- contractions. I know some, like she had said some abruptions are like not, they're like, they, you don't notice them. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of times, like there's pain and like blood, but not always. Gotcha. So that was something she was suspicious of. So she wanted to check, um, to break my water to check the amniotic fluid. Yeah. Um, and that would also help, you know, speed things along with labor. Mm-hmm. So um, because you did, because you had the contraction monitor and you were contracting quite a bit and you were not like, feeling it constantly. Yeah. Like I didn't notice. Oh. I mean, I, and eventually, like when I was watching it, in and they were getting stronger I kind of noticed it because oh. I could like see them yeah but if you didn't know <laughs> if you weren't watching no it, if it... I didn't know I mean I had some you know Braxton Hicks contractions mm-hmm. and stuff but like nothing painful like it wasn't painful mm-hmm. okay so she was kind of suspicious of that and um so she broke my water and it was you know totally clear and normal looking mm. I think she was also looking for meconium oh okay um 
So then I did start having stronger contractions after that, but um, I didn't want the epidural yet because I didn't, you know, want to have to be like in bed the whole time. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be like moving around. So I was just like bouncing on, you know, the labor ball. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And then at that point, I think all of our parents were there. Um, Taylor had gone with his dad to get, to go get food because neither of us had eaten anything. Oh. Um, since like lunchtime. So my mom and Taylor's mom stayed in the room with me. And I just remember like at that point, I kind of calmed down a bit and I was actually like, you know, able to like joke and laugh. Like I was laughing about like my fluid getting all over the floor. (laughs) I don't know, just whatever. I don't know why I was able to calm down, but I just, I just was. And um, I talked to my, I know I talked to my sister on the phone for a little bit, but I, I really don't even remember much about it, you know? Yeah. It's quite late now, right? Like everybody's. Yeah, it's out late. Room. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say it's been a few hours. So like at one point I um, decided to just kind of go walk the halls and the nurse was like, yeah, that, you know, that, that could help speed things along. Um, and so my mom, you know, walked around the halls with me. Um, because my labor wasn't, you know, really progressing, but Mm -hmm. I didn't want the epidural. And, um, you know, the nurse did tell me not to walk down certain hallways, um, you know, because I could hear crying babies and like see their pictures on the doors. Yeah. And I didn't listen to her. (laughs) I ended up going down all the hallways anyway, because I just didn't want to walk down my same hallway. And that was when I really realized that, um, they had me in a hallway by myself because, um, you know, they didn't want me to hear the other babies, which I am thankful for because that would, you know, I have heard so many stories where families had to listen to that and it's just horribly upsetting, but it was also just like, so it made me feel so alone Yeah. Yep. because I could see the other baby's pictures on the door and then mine had you know the the leaf with the teardrop yeah and so at that point it was yeah really late like probably 12 30 or 1 a.m mm-hmm. when I got back to my room and I was just I was so exhausted that I I wanted to try to rest yeah and my nurse did tell me you know if you get the epidural now, it'll really help you relax. So I just said, okay, fine, whatever, I'll get it now. And, you know, it's pretty late. So it didn't take the anesthesiologist very long to get there. Yeah. Um, and so I, I did get the epidural at that point, which um, ended up not really working on one side. So oh. I couldn't rest anyway. Oh, darn it. <laughs> as much as I tried. Yeah. I think I kind of dosed off for like, maybe five, 10 minutes, but it was just like the contractions kept getting really strong and they were on like one side. I could feel it all. So yeah. Yeah. They even tried to like flip me over onto my left side to try to get the medication and to go down that direction and it didn't work. Dang it. (laughs) No. (laughs) So, um, yeah, but it was like, it was very quickly after that, that I felt the urge to push and so we called the nurse in and I was like, I, I swear, like my body is pushing. Like I feel that urge. And, um, she was like, okay, well let me check you. And I was at 10 centimeters dilated. You were there. So it was very fast after that. So, um, I just remember she was kind of getting me into position and, you know, getting me ready. And I just, I remember she had Taylor helping with like my legs and stuff. And I just remember grabbing his arm And I looked at him and I was like, I went through an entire pregnancy and we don't get to bring our baby home. Like, it was just like that realization of like, I'm about to give birth. (laughs) And um, before I started pushing, you know, because they were waiting for the doctor to get there. She had asked me if I would want them to put my baby on my chest when she came out like they do with, you know, live births. And I said, yes, that I wanted them to do that. And so I was, you know, I started pushing and it was, it was fast. Like, I think I only pushed for about a half hour. 
Oh. I was like so determined. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, I, I was so determined to get it over with. Like, yeah. Um, so I think it was only a half hour before, you know, Faye was born at 3 a.m. And I, and then at one point she actually told me to stop because I had pushed her head out and the doctor wasn't ready yet. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I don't know why they always say that to people. Like, that's very need- hard to do. Yeah, you're like, I need to push. <laughs> um so then, you know, she put her on my chest like, right away, wrapped her up in a blanket and put her on my chest. And I <laughs> I didn't look down at her right away because I was like afraid and um I was just sobbing and Taylor was sobbing and I looked down at her and I just said she is so beautiful like she just looks like she's sleeping and Taylor said she looks just like you <laughs> and she was she was just so so perfect and beautiful um, you know, and then everybody in the room was crying, like the nurses, the doctor, everybody, like that's what's so cruel about stillbirth is it's like so silent, and all you really hear is like your own sobbing. <laughs> but I know the nurse asked, you know, if she had a name, and um. I just looked at Taylor and he nodded at me and, and I said, Faye Nicole. And then I think after I delivered the placenta, they, the nurse and doctor were like examining everything really closely. And, you know, I heard them say like, oh yeah, right there. Oh. And, um, and it was a section of her umbilical cord that was like cake. It was like kinked, like pinched. Oh, okay. Not a knot. It was just pinched. Yeah, it wasn't a knot. It was like pinched, kind of like if you like the best, I guess, analogy that I have to describe it is like a garden hose. Mm. When you um, kink that and the water doesn't come out, yeah. that's kind of what it looked like. Oh. I mean, I I know I looked. I just I don't remember it. I think I kind of blocked that out of my memory. But I, I know at the time I looked and I remember seeing it and I know Taylor remembers it. Oh, okay. Um. But the doctor was pretty confident that that was the cause of her death. So she did talk to us about autopsy. But at that point, I was just like, I couldn't stand the thought of having an autopsy done. Like, I just didn't want, I just couldn't imagine that anybody cutting up my little, you know, girl. I mean, it's, I, I kind of sometimes now feel like I should have done that, but it was just the decision that was right for us at the time. Yeah. Um, so then our nurse, she went out, our parents were all in the waiting room. There was like a family waiting room. So the nurse went out to get our parents. And I know my mom told me that she just lost, the nurse just lost it too. And she told them, you know, it was a court accident and that they could all come in and see her. So everybody came in, um, you know, gave, gave me hugs and we, you know, let them take turns holding her. My mom held her and then my mother-in-law held her. And then my dad held her for a little while. Um, I know he wasn't sure if he could do it. And then, you know, my father-in-law, he, he couldn't do it. He just, he looked at her, but he couldn't hold her. Um, and then, you know, it was starting to get light out at this point. So they all said their goodbyes. And I, um, I tried to actually get some sleep for a little while. And when I woke up, I, I wanted my mom to come back. So Taylor, you know, texted her to tell her to come back later in the morning. And um, my dad came back at some point. And then my brother came for a little while, which he was, he's actually the only one of our siblings that got to meet Faye. Um, oh, really? My older sister is out in Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. So she's not very close. And, um, Taylor's brother is in Chicago, so he's not that close either. So, um, you know, at the time we just, we didn't really think to ask people to come see her, you know, none of our friends really even knew at this point. Mm -hmm. So we just, I didn't even think about that, but, um, you know, Taylor and I, we spent that whole day taking turns holding her and 
you know, talking to her and just admiring how beautiful she was. And, you know, I kept telling her that I was so sorry that I couldn't keep her safe. And I know when my mom came, she held her a lot too, because I was just trying to rest on and off during the day. Um, and I know the nurses, you know, asked me if we wanted to have a photographer come and take pictures of her, a professional photographer that volunteered. And I'm so grateful for that because I never would have known or thought about doing the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I only have a couple pictures of her that were taken on our phones. And so, you know, that's one thing, cause I know the professional photographer photos, they're in black and white They're but they're incredibly beautiful, but I do wish I had a little bit, you know, more photos on in color yeah but the photographer she was just so sweet and so good with her and just made her like you know gave her like a sweet little headband and oh yeah so I'm really glad that we have those um and then um you know my doctor was there that day so she she actually was kind of surprised that she didn't deliver her she didn't think that I would go so deliver her overnight yeah okay Because my um, induction actually went pretty quickly, Mm -hmm. which, you know, she did say like, for your sake, I'm, I'm glad that it went quickly, you know, because that's just another just horrible thing about it is having to be in labor for so long. Um, So they, um, you know, she said like we could stay another night and have her with us they never took her out of the room really. Mm -hmm. Um, like she was just in the bassinet in our room the whole time, which that's the way that hospital does things with like the living babies too. They really don't have a nursery. Mm, Okay. They have a nursery, but it's not really a nursery. It's like where they take them to like do like, you know, the weights and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not. Yeah. So, um, you know, she, she did say that we could stay with her another night, but I just wanted to get out of there. Yeah. Were you feeling and okay? Were you feeling okay after the birth? Yeah, physically. Yeah, yeah. physically. I, okay. Physically, I was fine. I, you know, it was pretty physically, like, not not a complicated labor. Okay. And who knows? I mean, I, I was in so much emotional pain that I right. just couldn't really comprehend physical pain anyway. <laughs> right, right. But it was, yeah, it was pretty not, it was not complicated. So, you know, she said we could go home. Like she would feel comfortable letting me go home. Um, But we could also stay because that's, you know, protocol is to stay a couple nights. So I just, I couldn't stand to see, you know, Faye deteriorate at that point. Like she was just so perfect when she was born, but they didn't have a cuddle cot or anything. Mm. And Um, you know, so she did start to get, you know, a little more, you know, cold and purple and like, you know, that her nose started to bleed a little bit. Um, and I am an idiot and I never thought about like my motherly instinct was just to like wrap her up in her blankie and cuddle her and like keep her warm. But I, you know, that makes things worse. Like I'm an, like, I'm an idiot. I should have known that, you know, but I just didn't think about that. No, but it's your motherly instincts that have kicked in. I mean, like you said, yeah. you want to keep them safe and warm and yeah. cozy. And yeah, why wouldn't you do that? I think, I think you're perfectly fine doing that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so I just, I couldn't, you know, it was just time and, um, you know, it was the right distance at the time to go home then. So I was with her probably uh, like 14, 16 hours, I mean, between when she was born and when we got discharged. Um, But, you know, saying goodbye was like the worst day of my life. I, um, it was just so hard. And the nurses, they were all incredible and they were so sweet. And they, um, they did take her into the, you know, nursery. That's not really a nursery. And they just, you know, said, we'll keep her in here with us and we're going to take good care of her. And, um, I know that the, I had talked to the funeral home, 
um, that day too. And they were coming to get her that night. So I knew she didn't have to like, you know, it was just kind of comforting to know that somebody was coming to get her. Yeah. Um, so then I just, I just remember when we got home, you know, we, we just sat in her room and cried together. Yeah, I know. I, Taylor went in there and I was just like, why are you doing this to yourself? But then I just joined him. Like, you know, everything was ready. Yeah. Thankfully, there were a few things that I hadn't done yet, like um, put a car seat in the car. Yeah. And I didn't have like a bassinet in our room set up yet. I was waiting to do that at 37 weeks. So it's going home is the worst without your baby. It is. It is the worst. It's just like, it doesn't even feel like real life. Yeah. So you guys had a, um, you had Faye go to the funeral home, um, get picked up by the funeral home. And so what decisions did you guys make about, a funeral or if she was, if she, if she was being buried or if she was, how did that look for you guys? Yeah, we, we decided to have her cremated, um, because we just don't know where we're going to be mm. forever. Mm -hmm. You know, where we live now is not where we're from. So I just, we didn't know, and we wanted to have her close. Right. So we didn't really know, you know, where we would bury her. Mm -hmm. So we, we decided to cremate her and then that way we would just, you know, have her with us always. Um, we did not do a funeral. I just could not comprehend doing a funeral at the time. Um, I just, I didn't, I didn't think that I would be able to make it through something like that. Yeah. So again, that was just like the right decision for us. So we didn't really do like a funeral mm -hmm. or a memorial or anything. I'm actually not very religious at all, but I did have her blessed mm -hmm. um, by the chaplain at the hospital, um, which was really beautiful. And I'm really glad we did that. And I sent out, I had a close friend. She made like thank you memorial cards oh. with some of our, you know, pictures of her on it. And we sent those out to, you know, all the people that brought us meals or mm. sent us like gift cards, money, all of that stuff. Anybody that sent us something, you know, physically, we, we sent those thank you cards to memorial cards. So that's pretty much um, really all we did as far as um, I, you know, I have a lot of things like in memory of her, like I have a lot of, you know, jewelry. I remember like who got me each and every single piece. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I remember all of that. Um, I have um, a ring actually that I wear with my wedding ring that has some of her ashes in it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, and I, you know, I had a, like a custom urn made for her mm -hmm. from someone I found on Etsy and she was just like so sweet and amazing. So she, yeah, she has like, it's like pottery and it has her name on it and oh. um, pink mums because mums are the November birth flower. So that's really sweet. And then like one of the biggest things I did, you know, that spring after was um, we were doing landscaping at our house and I made like one se section is like her memorial garden. That's, so that's um, so sweet. Yeah, it is really, it's like my favorite and I just loved it. It was so healing to do that. Good. So that's wonderful. Uh, Caitlin, I, I always love to know the meaning behind names. So how did Faye get her name? I, um, it sounded like you guys had talked about it and you kind of knew that that was going to be her name. Um, when you just looked at each other, when, <laughs> when the nurse asked what her name was going to be. So tell me a little bit about how you guys chose her name. Yeah. So we had been, you know, after 20 weeks, when we found out we were having a girl, we had, you know, started thinking about names and I never had like a name picked out for a daughter and Taylor didn't either. Mm. 
Um, so we kind of just like, <laughs> we got one of these apps that <laughs> it's like, I don't know, it's like Tinder or something where you like yeah. swipe for a name. Oh, <laughs> And we, and then like, if you match with your partner, then like it notifies you or something. So we actually never matched on any of them because he never even used it. And he's the one that told me about it. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But like most of the names on there were like really kind of silly, weird names. Uh But like, I did see Faye come up on there and I was like, I've heard of that name. Like, Mm -hmm. that's pretty. Yeah. And I know it's like, it's very, very old. Mm -hmm. So it was not something that I had ever planned on naming my daughter, but it just like popped up and I, we had a lot of other options too. Mm -hmm. And like a few of them we agreed on. So we never, like, that was like the one where I remember giving him my list of names and saying like, okay, you're going to laugh at this one. And he was like, oh, what is it? I was like, Faye. And he was like, oh, I like that one pleasantly so surprised. I was like oh wow I'm really surprised and so you know it was just that was kind of like the front runner mm-hmm. and then Nicole is my sister's name oh so that you know I thought that they looked they sounded really pretty together yes totally it's got a good rhythm yeah. to it yeah it does sound pretty yeah so um you know, we, we weren't totally set on it, but it was the front runner. So mm-hmm. that's why, like, I kind of looked at him, you know, after, you know, she was born and he nodded and that's why you know, <laughs> we, we knew. So, yeah, that's, that's so fun. It's beautiful. It's a really beautiful name. And I, yeah, I love, you. I love to know um how big was she? How, cause she was 36 weeks. So she probably was a good little size. Yeah, she was. She was five pounds, two ounces. Mm -hmm. So she was kind of on the smaller side for 36 weeks, I think. But, you know, she didn't seem that small. Like Mm -hmm. she 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 seemed like a full term baby, you know, that's that's great. I mean, I was only a few days away from really being full term. So, yeah, that's so cool. And you did mention before that you had seen and and didn't really want to do any sort of autopsy. And um, so did did your doctor eventually basically rule it being an umbilical cord accident then? Yeah, they I think so. Um, I mean, I think they said it was probable Mm. um, because I think that you need to be a definitive diagnosis I think that you need some kind of like pathology which I know they did look at the placenta but there was nothing really definitive on there um when I had met with a maternal fetal medicine specialist Mm -hmm. they were the ones that told me that cord accidents you know can be diagnosed with really specific pathology Mm -hmm. and that a lot of pathologists aren't actually trained to do that oh so you know that's something that I've thought about is having look at my slides um for a second opinion Mm. it's just so you you did have some slide you did have some samples yeah they they did they I think they were really just looking for infection in the placenta oh gotcha okay um I don't even know if they like you know if they were really looking for that I think that the OB just wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything like, you know, there was like no infection going on. Gotcha. Okay. Um, And there wasn't. So yeah, I've thought about getting like a second opinion on the cord accident. I just don't really know if that will help give me closure. I mean, nothing's going to bring her back. No. So yeah, I just, I don't know. So yeah. yeah. So it's tricky that, that the decision about the autopsy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I and uh, I I actually work like I used to work in the lab oh (laughs) um and at the hospital I worked at they did do autopsies Mm -hmm. um you know for the babies and you know I know that they're incredibly sensitive about it it's just I just still couldn't you know handle having where where is she and like you know what I mean yes like I just couldn't yeah didn't want to yeah put her through that and that's fine. I um, have really enjoyed hearing about Faye and I'm so sorry. It is so hard to listen to because it feels so similar to ours and, and it's just so shocking and so, so difficult. So thank you so much for taking the time and, and telling us about her. Would you like to tell us anything else that you want to remember about her 
or anything about the day or anything that we may, may have missed? I guess I would just want to say that, you know, her life matters and and yes, like losing her has been painful and traumatic, but it's not what defines her. You know, I do want to look back on my good memories of her and kind of keep her memory alive that she, you know, she made me a mom and I will, I love her and I will think about her you know, every day for the rest of my life. That's perfect. Thank you so much again, Caitlin. Yes. Thank you for having me.